Sounds like a We're just waiting for a few more people to drop in, but we'll get started soon. And they can catch up when they get here. All right, well, I think we'll, we'll kick it off. I just wanted to welcome everyone. We are so glad you're here. Uh, it's great to see so many faces, familiar and new. Um, my name is Julie Newman, and I am a volunteer with National Council of Jewish Women. I like to stress that it's of and not for Jewish women. Many times people make that a small grammatical mistake, but it means uh, quite a bit of difference because as you may know, we stand for uh, safeguarding individual rights and freedoms and equality and justice for all, not just Jewish women. Uh, NCJW is the oldest Jewish women's organization in the country. We were founded in 1893 when the World's Fair was held here in Chicago by women just like you who wanted to get involved and make a difference. So kudos for taking the first step and making the effort to be here tonight. Um, we have an illustrious history. I am not going to go into great detail, but our website has a phenomenal history on it. So if you want to see some impressive things, uh, just check it out. Um, the timeline on NCJWCNS, that stands for Chicago North Shore, CNS.org. And you can see a fabulous timeline of accomplishments. Um, the, the couple that I just like to mention, because they're kind of my favorites, but there are so many, is um, Jewish women from NCGW established a station at Ellis Island as immigrants came to the U.S. in the early 1900s uh, to ensure that women and children weren't going to be labor or sex trafficked. About 20,000 people came through that station during that time. This organization also was responsible for founding Head Start, which started as a local program in 1950 and later became a national program. I imagine most of us have heard of that. And we also founded Thresholds in the 50s, which is now an independent mental health and substance abuse disorder agency, a local agency. So um, those are just some examples. Oh, and last, we did, uh, but not least, we established the first women and gender studies program in the Middle East at Tel Aviv University. So just a little taste of, um, of what this organization and people can do when they put their minds to it. So tonight, um, I think we have quite a variety of people in terms of um, who's new or uh, more experienced with NCJW. And I thought it might be fun if we just see a show of hands to see who is new or pretty new to the organization, if you want to um, raise your hand so we can see. Thank you. That's great. So you are not alone. You're in really, really good company. And how about um, current or former leadership in some way of a program or a board member or that kind of thing? So we've got nice representation there. And then how about people who've had some experience with NCJW or been a member for some time? So I imagine there's a few of those. Yes. Okay, great. So um, we also have representation from all of the geographic areas that our section uh, covers, which is the city of Chicago and the north and northwest suburbs of Chicago, as well as the western suburbs of Chicago. And then we have a separate section that covers the south suburbs of Chicago. So we're kind of everything else. So tonight, what we hope to do is give you an overview or a taste of our organization and let you hear from various volunteers that are involved in different aspects of what we do. 
And we would definitely like to encourage questions because it's meant to be interactive. I know sometimes on Zoom that's challenging, but we're asking if people could just um, use the hand raise icon in Zoom if you're familiar with that, or if you could uh, put your question in the chat on Zoom. Obviously, if uh, you're not familiar and you have to do it a different way and raise your hand or just speak out, that's okay too, but that would be probably the best. Um, and interspersed with um, those sessions, we are going to provide breakout rooms. So hopefully people can kind of start to get to know one another and simulate what we would be doing if we were actually together in person. Um, and last but not least, hopefully we're gonna do some virtual food tasting of some healthy and yummy foods to provide some midwinter inspiration. So that is what we're uh, hoping to do tonight. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our president of our section, Debbie Wiedinghoff. Unmute myself. Hello, everyone. I'm going to also share my screen for a moment. Uh, it's gonna look similar in the beginning. <laughs> so I hope you all can see it. Um, thank you, Julie, and um, it's really very exciting to have all of you joining us this evening, and I want to thank both Julie and Donna Fishman for organizing the Taste of NCJW, Food, Friends, and Purpose. It's a winning combination, um, and I'd like to begin the way we begin many of our meetings and our board meetings um, and with a with our mission statement, because it states better than I can why we are all here. So hopefully you all can see this. Um, so NCJW is a grassroots organization of volunteers and advocates who turn progressive ideas into action. Inspired by Jewish values, NCJW strives for social justice, by improving the quality of life for women, children, and families, and by safeguarding individual rights and freedoms. As Julie mentioned, NCJW has been fulfilling this mission for over 125 years and is responsible for so many groundbreaking social programs and crucial advocacy campaigns over the years. Julie also highlighted a couple of them, the Head Start program and thresholds, and one that um, I also am very proud of that we were instrumental in was in 1996, NCJW launched the National Campaign Strategies to Prevent Domestic Violence, creating education, outreach, and advocacy initiatives. Our section was along, along with eight other organizations that work with domestic abuse survivors created the Silent Witness Exhibit of Illinois to honor the women of Illinois who had been murdered uh, through domestic violence. And it is one of the um, issues that we do advocacy and um, community service for, um, and it's become a big part of our mission. Um, so, and as also Julie said, check out our timeline on the um, website. So our history is rich, but we are here this evening to talk about NCJ, uh, NCJW today. Here's a glimpse at today's NCJW advocates and volunteers. Melissa, you're on. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. So I'm coming back to my, let me get us back where I was. Great. So I can sum up 
the women you saw in the video and the women in our section in one sentence, we get it done. In recent years, our advocacy and was critical to the passage of both Illinois' Reproductive Health Act and the Youth Health and Safety Act. Our annual luggage for freedom and Mother's Day baskets support women and children who are survivors of domestic violence. Our Spotlight educational program keeps our members and communities informed on a myriad of issues, including police accountability, homelessness, affordable housing, abortion access, Black maternal health, just to name a few. Our participation in coalitions strengthens our voice locally in Springfield and in Washington, D.C. And our community service initiative, NCJW Gives Back, supports communities impacted by poverty, food insecurity, homelessness, and isolation. But to continue this work, we need you and your fresh perspective, passion, and skills. And I sincerely mean it when I say there is a place oops, waiting for you at NCJW. Um, so think about your skills or how you would maybe describe yourself. Is this you? Are you an extrovert? Are you an introvert? A, what, a writer, an artist, a public speaker, a dinner party planner, a fundraiser, a crafter, a number cruncher, always can use those, an out of the box thinker, a teacher, or maybe this is you, a connector, an influencer, a social butterfly, an organizer, a computer geek, a social media maven, a conversationalist, a reader, a storyteller, a photographer, or a lifelong le learner. There is a place waiting for you at NCJW if you have any of these skills or the ones I have not listed. So what we're gonna try to do now is in the chat, we're going to do a waterfall. I'm sure many of you have already done these on other Zoom calls. And what you're going to do is open your chat and then just put in maybe one of these words if it describes who you are or a different word that describes who you are, but don't hit enter until I say so. And we'll all hit enter at the same time and there will be a waterfall of skills. So open your chat write in what you, how you would describe yourself. And I'll give you a minute or so to do that because <laughs> some people are not quite as techy. And when I say enter, enter, Bev, you jump the gun. Okay, <laughs> everybody ready? Okay, why doesn't everybody just hit enter? We have organizer, activist, social butterfly. I like that one. I'm a crafter and a photographer, organizer, writer, artist, photographer. Oh, we must have more. Let's see, I have to go back up. I missed some. A reader, advocate, and lifelong learner. So we all have these wonderful skills, and there's a place for you waiting here at NCJW. And hopefully tonight you'll see, um, you'll hear about with ways that you can fit in. So finally, one more thing to let's leave you with. Start where you are, where you are, use what you have, do what you can. So if you hear anything tonight that resonates with you or you have questions about, just email me at engage at ncjwcns.org and I will either answer you or I'll get you the right person to answer you. So enjoy the evening and learn about NCJW. Thank you. Okay, well, I think we have our first food segment coming up now. So I hope you're all hungry to look at um, some fun food photos. 
Um, I'm going to preface this by saying I have recipes that I'm happy to share with anyone who's interested. Um, and, and I'll just share, you know, with everyone after, after the program, only what you'd like. So if you see something you'd like, um, feel free to just put the name of it in the chat. And what we are asking of you all is we're going to go course by course through the evening. But if you have something you've made that's fun or new or particularly healthy and you want to share, we would love to hear about it. And so if you could use that email, Debbie said, and please email us after the program over the next few days so we can compile it. And I'm going to be sending you a fun um, post-event recipe packet. So again, that email is engage at ncjwcns for Chicago North Shore.org. And while I'm going through this, if you have any questions, please indicate them in the chat and um, we can talk about things um, as, as they come up. So um, the first course is appetizer and salad. And um, since we're at the beginning of the evening and um, I do try to cook healthy. So I'm just trying to give some inspiration for the midwinter dull drums and my standard appetizer. It's always the same is my hummus because it's so darn easy and healthy and you can serve veggies with it. So I know it's not that exciting of a picture, but after my husband and I were out of town last winter and saw and bought it out, you know, out of town, we realized we don't need to go to a farmer's market for this we can go, um, you know, I can make this myself and it's just so darn easy. So, um, and he doesn't even eat garlic. There's no garlic in it, but you can certainly put almost anything you want, you know, hearts of palm, any beans you want. Um, so I have just a lot of salads. I love making salads. Um, you, my rule is there's no rule about salads. You can throw anything and everything, the kitchen sink into a salad, which is maybe why I like it so much. And they can be so filling and so pretty. And colorful. So here I just have some um, pomegranate seeds to add color on this one. Um, there's beans here. My husband is vegan and at the beginning of the pandemic he wasn't. So he has inched over from chicken and fish to um, some animal products and dairy to none. So you'll sort of see that my recipes and food tend to be um, you know, vegany and a lot of things like beans for filling this and here, um, just some fruit on a salad. It was probably summertime, but still just makes it fun. And uh, I have goat cheese on here on those seeds. Um, I'm big on chia seeds. I love adding that little bit of crunch and it's also healthy, you know, chia seeds, flax seeds, flax meal. Um, and uh, also those are hemp seeds on there. So any of that is, oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so again, there really is no recipe. I mean, this is like, you know, Trader Joe arugula and a few things on top. Um, if you've never grilled vegetables and put them in a salad, it's fun and it's a little different. Again, we're so like always trying to be kind of healthy. I try to minimize oil and sugar. In fact, I have almost an unspoken rule that I would never use all the fat a recipe calls for. I cut it in half automatically and then usually less from there. And the same goes for the sugar. And because I'm type one diabetic, I tend to use Splenda for a lot of things as well. So, you know, everyone's different and I'm not at all advocating one, one way or, or another, but just letting you know what I do and what works for me. So it might look a little dry, it probably has no oil on it, um, but it's yummy and it still has those char marks and then you can, you know, cut it up so this is the grilled romaine cut up uh, in a salad with some grilled corn and there's some grilled carrots on the side. Um, so yeah, we, we got a grill, I think a year or two before the pandemic and that came in handy. Um, this is a recipe from a cookbook and I was so proud because it sort of looked like the picture which doesn't happen very often, um, but it is a, a grain and veggie salad. And I believe I changed up the grain because I didn't have quinoa, but I used um, barley, which I love and um, some fun veggies that are a little different. And again, I serve these things for me, for us as a main course, because it's really filling, especially with that grain in there. So that is a fun one. Um, this one has some grilled green beans, it looks like, and also some grilled romaine on it. Uh, by the way, we use no dressing in our house. We use flavored vinegar and it is so tasty. If you haven't discovered the joy of flavored vinegars, Oh my goodness, they come in, you know, 30 different fruit flavors. And I do a white balsamic typically. 
uh, and it adds just a little carbohydrate, um, but it has no fat. So I use no oil. It's just, it's just not necessary. Um, so here's some grilled fennel. We got, we've been really getting into fennel um, and those are the fennel fronds on top and some cheese that, that was back in my hubby's cheese eating days. Um, and that is some feta and avocado on a salad. So again, the fat helps, you know, keep you sated. So you do need to have a little fat um, in order to have that satiation. Uh, this was just mint from the garden and watermelon and whatever else, but it was such a yummy, fun summer combo. So that was a fun, easy one. Um, fresh mozzarella, caprese salad. Again, no oil, it called for it. I just did the balsamic and salt and pepper. Colorful. I, I like the colors. So <laughs> this one with the beans and the chives from the garden and the seeds. You can see I like photographing the salads because I'm into it. <laughs> oh, and this one I included because um, it's got the grilled broccoli, grilled carrots, but the, that is just Greek yogurt. So that is not a dressing. And if you, I noticed that all these recipes call for a yogurt sauce or dressing. So I just decided to use it as a salad dressing. And it, you know, when you mix it in there, it's really creamy and delicious, healthy, and you get a little bit of protein, a little more filling. I just took in this one leftover salmon and kind of just broke it up and, and created a meal out of that on a otherwise, you know, cabbage, mixed greens, salad. Uh, this one has some grilled eggplant in it and some fun cabbage. So it was just a little, little different. Um, beans and cheese. So that's fun. This is actually a recipe. It was sort of a mustard vinaigrette and that was quite tasty. I was happy with that one. Um, just some grilled corn and other veggies on that one. Grilled zucchini, which grills up so nicely, and asparagus on um, that guy. Um, this is a yummy recipe um, that I slice with my mandolin, which was one of my um, pre-COVID Hanukkah presents to myself. And um, I do love it. So that is a really easy, yummy salad, the fennel with the apple. And I just tried this the other day and I was able to um, crunch up the Brussels sprouts in the Cuisinart. So that was a really fun one. Um, and then I did get a spiralizer shortly before COVID and it's really fun and easy to use. So that is spiralized yellow squash. And that is a different way to cut the yellow squash and spiralize it. And then here's some spiralized beets and that I believe the yellow here is sweet potato, I think, or that might be um, the squash and then the other, the whiter one is zucchini. And here some of them are together in this really yummy salad recipe I have with this avocado dressing. So the dressing really makes it, but it's kind of fun just texture wise with those spiralized veggies. Those are great, um, Julie. I'm gonna, it's, we're a few minutes over. Okay. So I'm gonna, thanks. Sure. Um, so I want to introduce, so first, thanks, Julie. And sure. I know she could probably oh, do sure. this all night. So yeah. um, my name is Donna Fishman. I've been a member of NCJW Chicago North Shore since the very early 2000s. So I know the organization pretty well, and I'm really happy to see some, a lot of very familiar faces and lots of new faces too. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to move into breakout rooms and some of our board members are going to just facilitate discussions just so people can get to know each other better. This is a big group and you know, obviously we're, most of us are muted. So we're gonna go into small groups and then we will be back in about 10 minutes. And that offenders are held accountable. And CJW court watchers observe at the second municipal courthouse in Skokie and, um, and have continued even as the, the court proceedings have been on Zoom. And finally, I'll tell you about JCAS, which is Jewish Community Against Sex Trafficking, and CJSW's effort to raise awareness and promote advocacy about the underreported and under-researched exploitation of children, teens, and women. So there's opportunities to get involved in all of these programs, whether it's through advocacy and legislative and policy efforts, whether it is uh, encouraging your synagogue or organization 
to do these displays, a silent witness or, or traffic teams, whether you want to go out, some of you said you were teachers, if you want to go out and do education, um, all kinds of ideas and um, would be happy to talk more. As you can see, I'm very passionate about these programs. Thanks so much, Amy and Nora and Pam, and they've all been tremendous leaders. And it, um, Pam didn't say it, but she's been co-chairing with Nora just as long as Nora has been doing this. So together, it's like 30 years of, of experience. And that's one of the great things about NCJW is we give you such great experience with whatever air, you know, with whatever you're interested in. I'm going to spend a, just a moment talking about some of our other community services. And um, it's a big list. We will follow up and tell you a little, we can tell you more about any of these. Um, so I don't remember what E stands for, but we have right this year, we're really focusing on homelessness and hope, helping to get people housed and to help people who are, you know, who are homeless. So we've had a couple community services. We've, uh, we're doing some education around it. And of course, advocacy at the state level. Um, so I do wanna mention that we're gonna be doing a collection for Deborah's Place in March of household cleaning pro products for people. Um, also, we have an initiative we started at, we started during the pandemic, NCJW gives back and it's basically collections and we have a, a monthly theme. So this year we're donating to the Northfield Food Pantry and next month, as I said, Deborah's Place. So a very simple way, you can also donate money if you'd like or gift cards. Um, we serve for, a, well, it's different with COVID, but two to four times a year at two different soup kitchens in Evanston. So we make sandwiches, we go and help cook, serve the food, and it's at a church in Evanston and also Beth Emmett Synagogue. Um, we also have a program that was started in the Western suburbs um, um, by NCJW women out there, Mother's Day gift baskets. And again, this is actually a, a domestic violence project because we give these Mother's Day gift baskets to women who are in domestic violence shelters on Mother's Day. And it's a lot of personal care and just nice product, you know, nice products. And we collect, we collect items during the year, we buy some of the items, but one of the ways that we have been collecting um, under the leadership of Barb Dollinger, so you should raise your hand, um, take your credit here, is, is the Martin Luther King Volunteer Day that happens in Highland Park every year. We do a project and then um, and people can donate. And then we've had a program that actually isn't functioning right now. And I have been really pushing people to help get this started. It's called Ready for Reading. And it's a preschool reading program in low-income preschools. And we have the whole curriculum. We have the books. Um, now, of course, most schools are not taking any volunteers. But I just I hope you'll keep that in mind for after COVID. So this just gives you an idea of the breadth of the community services that we have. So thank you for that. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it back over to Julie to talk about main courses and desserts. I feel like I'm the comic relief. Um, <laughs> from domestic violence to um, chicken. Uh, so let's see, I am gonna share my screen and just take you through, I'm gonna, I truncated things so I won't um, hopefully be too long-winded here. Um, so I've got some soups. I'm going to go quickly, but please, again, just indicate if there's anything you are interested in. This is a like four ingredient broccoli soup, super healthy. None of my soups have any oil in them. Um, this this is, was a summer thing with Greek yogurt, yummy, quick and easy. Um, I don't do anything that's complicated, by the way, <laughs> and I don't do anything where I have to buy special ingredients. Uh, corn and coconut soup, this, I loved that one. Um, this is a fun winter kind of stew, warm, warm the cockles of your heart or whatever, uh, tomato and white bean. This was fun because I usually make butternut squash soup. And again, it's literally like oven roast, a squash, onion, and, and broth, but this one was pumpkin and it was from that Oh She Glows cookbook. So it had like different canned pumpkin and some different seasonings. So it was kind of a fun, again, no cream. So no oil, no cream. And this was a fun um, brothy one. Melissa it reminded me of your ramen soup tonight. It just looked so legit, you know, <laughs> and it's just the spiralizer. It's, it, it's a miracle worker and then kind of a yummy broth. This is also from Oshi Glows. If you've never um, used that one, it's kind of these Indian 
type spices, which was yummy. And uh, this yummy chicken chili was very filling. Oh, and this one I made the other day for a friend. Um, so those are just zoodles. They're veggies that, that serve as noodles. So that was that guy. And then um, for main courses, we do have some, some chicken, um, chicken piccata. I'd never made it. It was not that hard and it actually tasted pretty good, surprisingly. This has like four ingredients, very yummy, boneless chicken thighs with balsamic. This one was a bit of a pain, but it tasted good <laughs> if you're into tofu. Um, this is like my all-time favorite. I make this for company. Um, this is from Plenty, that Yotam, Yotam Adolenghi cookbook, if anyone has it. Only I find that I like have the time to make it because I just cut, cut um, so many of the steps. Um, but it's eggplant and mango pasta. And this is like a healthy take on eggplant parm. You don't have to peel the eggplant if anyone never knew that. Um, literally no oil. It's just sauce and herbs and we bake it. And my dad and my husband love this one. So it's just easy. You do need to eat a lot to fill up, but it's super healthy. Um, this one is shakshuka. So that was my attempt at shakshuka, I think also from Plenty. And as you can see, I threw the kitchen sink in, in terms of veggies on that one. Um, this is also from Plenty, but again, I make this in like 20 minutes. It's literally just um, mushrooms and polenta. And of course I add cheese, my husband doesn't, but um, easy and yummy. And the polenta is pretty filling. So I love that. This was a lentil sloppy joe without the bread. And then of course I threw cheese on top. Um, but you could sort of see the lentils in there. And that was really tasty and a good way to get filling protein from the beans. Just some fun grilled veggies. Um, and this was a really yummy broiled pepper salad that I need to try again. So I just thought if anyone wants that recipe, I love avocado toast. So I make all kinds and this is just my, you know, quote unquote basic one. And then I was trying to emulate a restaurant near me. So I did it with the edamame on it. Um, but it's just yummy. I love that for like breakfast or lunch. And this is sort of a hidden secret. I mean, it's not really a secret, but just pancakes with no flour. So it's just oatmeal and you, um, whip it up in the blender or the um, food processor with cottage cheese and egg whites. And it is filling because of the cottage cheese if you put enough in. There's actually no um, milk that you need or, or you know, no flour and we just eat it with lemon or um, peanut butter sometimes. Um, this is a fancy looking thing. So that's why, even though I know that's raw and it's kind of gross, but um, my husband did those uh, lemon things because we were having company. This was back in his chick and this is what it looks like afterward. So that's a New York Times recipe, but um, I do find their, their things good. And again, I didn't use half the ingredients, mostly just the lemon was my favorite thing. And then this is from the spiralizer. So it was um, a casserole and it just sort of looks interesting with those, um, with those, with those um, veggies. And here's a, here's a tough recipe that I do love and is easy. So if anyone is interested in that one, um, and again, with the zoodles, just for something different. And then last but not least, we can't forget dessert, but since I do super healthy, low sugar, low fat, I must admit, I don't have nearly the plethora of desserts, um, but this was a zucchini bread and I just always use applesauce. So there's no fat, um, sugar-free pudding, but if you throw some bananas in, it looks a little fancy. It tastes a little fancier. Skim milk um, is in that because it doesn't really work as well with almond milk, unfortunately. Chia seed pudding, you probably all know, but you can throw almost anything in that, different seeds and nuts and fruit, and it is yummy and filling their cinnamon on that. I tried this lemon curd and it actually was pretty good. Um, and I made it sugar-free because that's what I like to do for me. Um, but it was uh, yummy and not, not, not fattening. Um, these next two recipes for cookies, I mean, again, I mean, uh, no promotion, but this Green Healthy Cooking was the website I found it on. And this gal has some great recipes. So these were really filling called Midnight Cookies and uh, there are pumpkin seeds in them and I think peanut butter. And these I believe have pumpkin in them which is why they're so sort of orangey. And I believe those are cranberries and oatmeal as you can see. So again, like no regular flour, I don't think it's so very little and very little 
sugar, um, sweetener, and fat. And last but not least, <laughs> they're supposed to be cookies. They're more like blobs, but they tasted really good. And again, they were like, you know, sort of sugar-free, fat-free. It was just cocoa and coconut and things like that. So um, just giving you a flavor, because if we were in person, you know you wouldn't get this many different treats. Um, but we really, we would love to hear um, about anything new you guys have been making during COVID, whether it's appetizers, soup, uh, maybe a stew because it's winter time or a fun dessert. And it doesn't have to be uber healthy, but um, we'd love to hear about it. If anyone wants to um, mention something or put it in the chat and um, <laughs> Shoshana commented on my dishware. I love that. Um, thank you, Shoshana. I do like dishes, but um, yeah. So uh, we would love to hear from anyone. And and. Did anybody get into the sourdough bread baking? Lori, tell us about your stir fries. What were some of the, any new ingredients you, you stir fried with? Yeah, I've made a bunch of um, mostly chicken breast stir fries, but very often they, they're, they're, they're just full of vegetables and, and not much else but I really like to use bok choy and um, we've switched over pretty much from using soy sauce to coconut amines or aminos, whatever the label says. And um, from broccoli, in, in fact, I, I don't always buy fresh vegetables. I use a lot of frozen. So you can roast frozen broccoli or frozen Brussels sprouts or put them in your air fryer or something. We've really used our air fryer a lot. So those are all fun. And I did get into the sourdough bread thing for a short time and I still have the starter um, and I keep it alive, but I pull out um, a cup of it every once in a while and make crackers out of it. So oh. yeah. Oh. How do you make crackers out of the sauce? How do you do that? Um, there's a recipe that I followed that I'm happy to share. It, you do use more flour. So it's the sourdough starter, um, equal amounts of flour. I usually put in olive oil and some kind of herb, and then you roll it out really thin and bake it, and it works really well. Very cool. I got an air, I got an air fryer also. Who else, who else mentioned something? Julie, are you watching the chat? Who else should we call on? Yeah, no, Melissa was just asking about those sourdough crackers. Do you use the King Arthur flour recipe? She wanted to know. You know, I got this from a friend, so she may have used it, but she shared it with me. So I, I don't know where it's from. I can look it up and see if it's the same. And Shoshana mentioned that she has a rice cooker and she's been making veggie fried rice in the rice cooker, which... I never thought you could do because I think of fried rice as having to be sort of oily and crispy, but in the rice cooker, everything steams, right? Can you tell us about well, that? To be clear, I make the rice in the rice cooker and then the next day I make the fried rice. So it just made the whole process faster. That's where I was, and I'm really excited about the rice cooker. I wanted a talking rice cooker, like from South Korea, but I couldn't get one of those. So I, instead I went with the, like a regular one. Uh, it doesn't talk to me or anything, um, but I, I make the rice and then stir fry all the veggies and sauce and rice, just like, but I just kind of make it up with whatever veggies I have, whatever sauce I'm feeling like. and turns out different every time, but it's always, you know, edible. So I figure it's a success. So you just stir the rice in. You don't actually have to stir fry per se the rice. You kind of just stir it in with the veggies when you're done. Yeah. And it, I mean, it gets cooked. So like the rice will get, um, I might burn it a little bit. So the rice gets a little crunchy, but it's, I like it. I like it with kind of that sticky, crunchy rice in it. <clears throat> Yum. Sounds awesome. Beverly Copeland, you raised your hand. Did you want to share something? I did. Well, I was going to say that um, I like to cook healthy, but I'm not quite in Julie's category. Mm -hmm. um, but I also love very um, 
tempting desserts. And I, I don't know, when I was growing up, my mother had, we had dessert every night with dinner and she made, you know, it's like a bad habit that she started and I cannot um, eliminate that. So we always have dessert and I actually probably have dessert after lunch as well, if I have to tell the truth. Um, but I made um, a lot of fun things with yeast during the pandemic. And I actually did a Zoom with some friends and um, we made the same recipe together in our own kitchens, but then we compared notes and you know each step that we took in the baking process, we compared it. And then at the end, we showed off what we had made and that turned out to be actually quite a bit of fun. Oh, and I That's also made some, I have, when I have uh, like berries, like uh, raspberries or strawberries or blueberries, it start getting a little mushy. I don't like them that way. So I don't like to waste food. So I put them in the freezer. And then when I have enough, I make jam. And um, I also don't like to add a lot of sugar. I always cut my sugar. And I just put it in a pan with a very tiny little bit of water or sometimes maybe a little bit of fruit juice and cook it for a while. And sometimes I add that Serto, which makes it a little thicker. And sometimes I don't, but um, it comes out really good. And then I just, um, I put it in the freezer, have little jars of it and take it out as I need it. So you don't really have to go through that whole thing of sterilizing the jars and everything. It's so much easier and fresher and the color is brighter because you're not cooking it for so long. So the raspberries look very you know, the color is still that same red and the blueberry, and it's really good for, you know, pancakes or on peanut butter and jelly or whatever. So that's my story for the night. Great. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody. And Nancy just said maybe the, all the recipes could be shared. So I don't know if Julie's going to share every single one of the hundred she, that she showed, <laughs> but whatever she shares, we'll share with everybody. And if you have one that you mentioned tonight or that you really like, send it in, send it to that engage engage at ncjwcns.org and we'll make a little cookbook so that would be great as a way to share so we're going to go and finish up we have two more presentations about ncjw um, and the first is going to be about advocacy and the second one's going to be on our social and educational program so i'm going to um, share my screen for the advocacy one now okay take it away so our presenters here are jill Lexier, who is one of our co-state policy advocates, and then Kim Sterling, who is um, who's on our board and our treasurer, will talk about our social education programs. Donna, can you start at the first slide, please? Did I miss a slide? Oh, hello. Oh, that happened. I'm sorry. There you go. Here. Thank you. Sorry. So, all right. So thanks so much. I'm the state policy advocacy co-chair. So along with my colleague, Jan Schwartz, we coordinate all our advocacy here in the state of Illinois, liaising with our national office and being a network with our counterparts in other states. Can I tell you that I, I love this job? I love advocating with NCJW. And today I'm going to tell you why I love advocating with NCJW, what issues we're engaged in and how you can get involved. So first, the why. Donna? Thanks. So it's a bit like the Passover four questions. Why is NCJW different than other organizations? So the first one is that we're good at it. It's our legacy. Ever since we began in 1893, NCJW has advocated for immigrant rights, for better living conditions, for birth control, and in support of families. And we have continued to do so over the years. We're greatly respected in Washington, DC, and have had excellent relations with almost every president. Number two, we are nonpartisan. One of the reasons why I think we are so well respected in our advocacy is because we stick to the issues and not get involved in campaigns. We are a 501c3 organization and therefore we are strictly nonpartisan. Now, some people might feel a little encumbered by that, especially in a year like this year, which is an election year, but I really do believe that by focusing solely on policy rather than people has made us credible and successful over the years. Number three, we're Jewish. However, unlike some Jewish organizations who focus solely on assisting the Jewish community, NCJW who has always been dedicated to improving the lives of women, 
children and families in the communities and countries in which we live. I am proud to do this work as a Jewish person, especially in today's environment, where there are some very vocal religious voices that have dominated the moral and faith-based conversations. It's become increasingly important that we speak out as people of faith, particularly, for example, as we advocate for reproductive health rights and justice. And four, we are a multi-issue organization. As I mentioned, historically, we have advocated on a number of different issues and continue to do so to this day. It gives us a broad perspective and helps us create networks and coalitions with a diversity of people and organizations and allows us to take an intersectional approach. Next. So what are those issues we're working on? So while we're a multi-issue, we do like to focus our attention on about four core issues at a time. We take our lead to some extent from our national organization. So the two issues you see there on the left-hand side, reproductive health rights and justice and voting rights are national issues that we've embraced. And on the right-hand side are two issues that here in Illinois we've chosen to work on, gun violence prevention and racial justice. Now, many of these issues have offshoots and there's lots of intersection as shown by those connections. And we're also, we're also engaged in, next slide, uh, next advance, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so then we also get engaged in some of these intersectional issues such as gender-based violence, an offshoot of our repro work is menstrual equity, immigration rights, judicial nominations, and has been mentioned already, some housing access and homelessness. We find our best success working with other organizations and coalition. And when we can't find a coalition, we create one. My colleague, Jen Schwartz, initiated the Promote the Vote Illinois Coalition and the Building Equity Coalition. Next slide. Well, I hope you're all ready to get involved. How do you do that? We have lots of opportunities, whether you're just putting your toe in the water or up for some laps. And through technology, the goods aspect of technology, Amy, many of these opportunities can be done from the comfort of your own couch. So here's an easy one that I hope you all take on, starting today. You can act on the take action today alerts that come in your email on Tuesday. So you would have received it this morning. In there, we've distilled the requests you get from all those other organizations and focus on usually three items of importance or urgency for which we've provided a request, usually with a very easy link to sign a petition or make a call or other action item. For just slightly more involvement, while the state legislature is in session, you can become a witness slip warrior. So witness slip warriors respond to an email from me with instructions for directly supporting and once in a while opposing a specific piece of Illinois legislation. So if you don't mind getting a couple of emails a week from me in the fall and in the spring, and you're able to act quickly, please sign up for that. Advance, please, Don. If you want to learn more about our issues, I'd love for you to join our NCJW policy or the SBA team. We meet monthly via Zoom, where we share information on the issues, progress of legislation, status of our coalitions. We learn from each other, we strategize, and sometimes we just commiserate. So if you'd like to sit in on a meeting and check it out, please let me know. And then for even more engagement, for those of you who are personally invested or just passionate about a specific issue, you're welcome to join us when we visit our legislators. Now, despite the pandemic, we've continued to engage in visits with our legislators virtually. So if you have a relationship with your state rep or congressperson, or you'd like to develop one, again, let us know. And then for the ultimate advocacy experience, nothing is more empowering than going to Washington. So you can join NCJW this year at Washington Institute, May 15th through 17th. And you should be getting more information on that. So from minimal exertion to fully engaged, I hope you all find a way to get involved that suits you and find advocating with NCJW as fun and rewarding as I do. 
Thanks so much, Jill. Wow, that was awesome. Awesome presentation. Um, all right, Kim. Kim's gonna Kim's gonna follow that with a <laughs> to talk about some of our social and educational programs. You gotta unmute. I'm really sorry now. I don't have slides. So um sorry about that. Um I uh, was tasked to talk about our social and educational events, and it's been um, a little challenging with COVID. So there's kind of pre-COVID activities and uh, current activities. And, uh, you know, the Zoom gatherings we have had, uh, you know, for two years as we've gone on through the pandemic, and it has been a nice way to get together. Um, uh, so a lot, all these programs that I'm talking to you about tonight are, um, have been available on Zoom now since uh, the pandemic started. So we have uh, one group that's called the Salon that was started in um, basically right after the election in uh, mid 2017. And it was a gathering, uh, an in-person gathering um, of people who were interested in coming together to meet each other and to talk about a topic and they would pick out a reading and we would get together and discuss our feelings about the readings or the, you know, if we watch something, whatever it was. So that was how I really one, I kind of wanted to start with that because it's really was my entree into NCJW. And I met many of the women who are now on the board or who are on this call through the salon. Um, some of the topics that we have talked about uh, in the last 18 months, uh, being Jewish at Christmas, how to forgive Trump supporters, uh, reproductive rights, intersectional feminism. Uh, we did a domestic violence program in conjunction with Purim. So it uh, has been kind of whatever uh, strikes our fancy um, as uh, Donna and I have been the uh, moderators and the organizers. And we are um, very happy for somebody to take on that uh, gauntlet uh, going forward in our new um, fiscal year starting in uh, September. So that was fun and it helped people meet people and get involved in the organization. And our uh, fellow members in Chicago uh, downtown said, how come we can't have something like that? And they started the city salon and uh, very similarly decided on issues that they wanted to educate people on. And their turnout was so enormous that um, it was not hosted in people's living rooms anymore, like we had been doing in the suburbs. Um, people were using their party rooms and their condos. Um, so I think there's a great hunger for this kind of, um, you know, in-person interaction and learning from each other. Um, and that has also transitioned to um, being on Zoom. And it's also now called Spotlight. And they have worked on issues that are of importance to NCJW and that are of importance uh, as an activist, such as homelessness or immigration or uh, sexual abuse of Native Americans. Um, we did a really nice three-part series this past fall. I, I'm sorry, time has no meaning on propaganda. And uh, recently they've done something on uh, the power of your vote. So that's a nice way to get involved either for uh, participating um, you know, or actually helping next year to be on a, a steering committee for these activities. And, um, you know, you always learn something and you meet a couple new people. And I think it's very helpful as we're advocating to understand more about the issues that are facing us. Some of the other things that were more prevalent uh, pre-COVID uh, were more standalone evening or lunch educational programs. Uh, we had one on domestic violence where we had somebody come down from one of the domestic violence shelters and give us a, a talk over dinner about some of the activities that their organization provided and the prevalence of domestic violence, which was um, pretty eye-opening and pretty scary. And uh, on Zoom, we have had authors talk about uh, issues recently, such as redlining in Chicago, that was um, very informative. Currently, our new effort, um, much um, in debt to Melissa Prober, um, is our LIFTS program, which is our leadership for a new generation of leaders, uh, bringing um, women 
um, more empowerment and more tools to help with advocacy and with strengthening their own comfort in being a leader. And we're looking forward to seeing um, this cadre of leaders really develop um, and take charge in the future. Um, some of the fun stuff we've done, because it's not all domestic violence, um, is tours uh, of fun places. Um, and this is all, of course, more pre-COVID. The weekend before um, COVID hit in Chicago, uh, we did a nice group tour to the RGB exhibit at the Holocaust Museum with a talk on reproductive rights. Um, I understand uh, a group pre my involvement went to the Leslie Hinman auction house and had kind of an inside backstage tour. Um, and we've done a couple plays, clearly, you know, pre-COVID. Um, we had tickets to What the Constitution Means to Me, um, which I think was in April of 2020. Um, Roe was done at the Goodman in January of 2020. Before that, um, we had groups going to see Beautiful and to see Evan Hansen. And we've also gone to plays that you may not have heard of, but uh, somebody uh, knew the playwright and was able to get the playwright to stay and do a, a talk with us, or it was on an issue that, you know, is related to our organization. So, you know, for me, one of the reasons I joined NCJW was to meet people who had kind of common interests and um, learn more about the world around me and stuff. And my son graduated high school in 2019. So it was kind of a nice time for me to get out there and, you know, get involved in something new. So we'd like to invite you as well, as you see invitations to these activities. And sometimes if you haven't done it before. I know a lot of times it's easy to say, oh, they don't really want me or I'm uncomfortable. I don't know people, but, you know, especially on Zoom, just log in, come join us and, um, you know, we really welcome you and your ideas and your participation and hopefully your leadership in the future. Thanks so much, Kim. That was a great overview. And um, I just wanna put a plug in because Kim and I co-chair the Suburban Salon one, which is on Zoom, so it doesn't matter where you are, of course, um, is that next week our salon is on the, I think it's the 17th, but it could be the 16th, but Melissa's gonna talk about upcoming events and it's on, your feminist moment when you kind of had the epiphany that you were a feminist. So I'm very excited. And we have a woman in her 20s and another one in her 30s joining us to give the younger person's perspective. So that's exciting. Um, all right. So we are going to go back into breakout rooms just to have some time to sort of process all this information you just got and um, just to get to know each other. Um, I think you're going to be pretty much in the same rooms with the same leader. So if you didn't get if you didn't have everybody have a chance to talk, so go back to what you did the first time um, and just have a chat and then we'll bring you back. Thanks. So bad about that. Thanks. I hope you all had good discussions. Um, the couple of groups I went into were having really good discussions. And one was just talking about people being a little zoomed out. So um, really, I just want to say again, how thankful we are that you're here and you've stayed. Um, and we're going to be wrapping up in just a few minutes. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Melissa. Do you want to share your screen or should I share mine? I guess you are. Excellent. I am. Um, let me push that little thing. There we go. So I'm just gonna, I'm Melissa Prober. I'm just gonna talk about um, a few of our upcoming events. Some have already been mentioned by other people. Um, and some are from our section, some are from our national organization. Um, so this, this Sunday, we have this um, amazing National Racial Equity Community Education Day. Um, it's gonna be an amazing experience. Um, oh, and I should say, I'm going to put a link in the chat where you can see a PDF of all of these, and you'll also receive the PDF tomorrow. Um, and all of these events are on our website as well. Um, so that's an amazing program. Um, our NCJW Salon, a Suburban Salon for February, is on your, your first feminist moment. Um, that's February 16th at 7.30. Uh, our NCJW Spotlight uh, is on From Homelessness to Home, and it's uh, a really interesting, it'll be a really interesting discussion, uh, February 28th. 
at seven and these are all virtual and continuing our virtual programming uh, we're having an amazing town hall on housing access in illinois on march 3rd at seven um, our national organization and this is a not to miss it's not the patriarchy's forum a feminist celebration on march 15th uh, 6 30 central time on zoom and then uh, we have our washington institute our premier advocacy event uh, May 15th to 17th in Washington. And then I also just wanted to mention uh, it's in June, but um, we have a wonderful um, Women of Vision Awards Gala. Um, Donna Fishman is going to be receiving um, one of the awards for innovative leadership. Um, so that's a, a not to miss event as well. And I'm gonna put a link in the chat. And then again, you'll get um, all the information tomorrow in an email. Thanks, Melissa. I'm just going to share my screen one more time to wrap us up. Um, just, the next slide. just in conclusion, um, so again, just want to thank everybody for being here. And I really want to thank our board members who facilitated all our small groups and everyone who presented. Um, I hope something resonated. I know at least one person I heard, you know, everything was interested. I'm a little overwhelmed, but I hope there's something that makes you want to get involved. And there's, we have about 10, 15 women on the board and all, you know, all happy to kind of mentor you, be with you, go to, go to a zoom meeting with you. Um, at send, we talked before, just sending your, any recipes you have to Julie to accompany hers. We'll get those out. I just put the link in for a short survey. We're also going to send that out to you tomorrow as well, just to let us know what you heard tonight that interested you. I hope you'll check out our webpage. I also put the link in for our events page and we will be in touch with you. So um, we're really happy you came and, and hope that you will um, continue to stay involved with us. Um, you know, one of the things I just wanna end with saying that so many of the projects you heard about and programs are because people had a passion about something. And I would say everyone who is in NCJW has a passion for the mission, which is so simple and yet so broad to um, improve the lives of women, children, and families. Um, one thing that wasn't mentioned tonight, and those of you who live on the North Shore will, might know about this, in the 70s, our national organization did some research on what are the issues facing women today, and it was when women were going back to work, right, kind of with that wave of feminism, and there wasn't enough childcare, and so childcare became an issue. So here, we helped to found the Tricon Child Care Center, which is a sliding fee child care organization, mostly serving Latino families in Highland Park. And the Tricon is because it was with um, Trinity Church, which is where it's housed, and Con for Council, for National Council of Jewish Women. So again, it's people who have a passion, and that's why we have Luggage for Freedom, because people have a passion. Nora, Nora said she was right there in the first meeting when we after we heard about that program. So this is, it's such a great outlet for any kind of topic that you're interested in for a program, for a salon, we have the two salons. So, um, so again, I just wanted to really thank you. I'm gonna unshare so we can see each other again. And I wanna thank everybody for coming. And I really hope to see all of you again at one of our many upcoming events. So thank you all so much. Thank Thanks you. for being here. Thank you, great job.